So it's been over six months now since my last What's On My Phone video, and I've been meaning to put this one together for a little while now because things are quite a bit different than when we last looked at my daily driver setup. I've got a new launcher, a new home screen setup, and for the first time in a very long time, I'm actually now regularly routing my phone. So let's dive in and take a look at What's On My Phone. So as most of you may or may not know, I've been using the Pixel 3 XL as my daily driver since it launched last year. And I have to say, despite the negative press that this phone got at launch, it's actually been a super fun phone to use. Now I have the clearly white variant with only 64 gigabytes of onboard storage and I barely scratched the surface of that internal storage thanks to Google Photos and Spotify, meaning most of my internal storage is really only reserved for installed applications, which isn't really a lot. This is actually a new replacement unit that was recently sent to me because my old unit had a problem with the front facing camera in that when it was opened, it would for some reason randomly start vibrating quite regularly. And so I had to send that back, but even that unit was in top notch condition. It had little to no scratches or marks on it whatsoever because I was taking really good care of it. Aside from that one issue with the front facing camera on my unit, it's actually been an excellent performer and software updates have fixed many of the well-known issues such as the poor RAM management issue and the low audio quality when doing video recordings. So I've actually really enjoyed using this phone as my daily driver. Now you might be wondering why on earth I root a phone like the Pixel 3 XL in 2019 and ultimately it comes down to Android 9 Pie. With its introduction, Google did something a bit funny with the way that the multitasking or now called the overview menu works and also how the gesture controls behave and that they're actually kind of baked into the default stock launcher, not the overall OS. And so this is fine if you're someone who's happy to use the stock launcher, but if you're someone who loves a little bit of customization, even a tiny amount, then using the stock launcher is pretty much not an option, particularly on the Pixel devices. Now the stock launcher obviously changes depending on which device you own, but basically what this change in Android Pie means is that as soon as you throw a third party launcher into the mix, the gestures and the overview menu all of a sudden become a bit janky. Animations aren't quite there, the swipe right for recent apps is super buggy, and you lose the ability to swipe up into your app drawer from the overview menu. To be honest, I actually think it makes using a third party launcher super unenticing. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the developers of the Launcher application, which I've talked about a bit on my channel before, they developed an application called Quick Switch. And this basically enables you to set up any supported third-party launcher as the default home screen launcher, meaning it gains full access to the overview menu and the gesture controls. That means you can use version two of the Launcher launcher or the OnePlus launcher with its full screen gesture controls. Plus there's a few more and potentially more on the way as well. But the only catch is that it requires root or a neat.d support. So with all of that said, I made the call a couple of months ago to take the plunge, unlock my bootloader and root my Pixel 3 XL using Magisk. And I now use Launcher version two as my default home screen launcher. And it's been nothing short of amazing. The rooting process on a Google Pixel phone in particular is actually ridiculously easy. And if you're into customization at all and you use a phone like this one, then I actually highly recommend going through with the process. And I'll leave a few really helpful XDA articles below, which walk you through the process in a really clear and easy to follow way. Using Launcher version two as my default home screen launcher, not only enables me to customize my home screen, but it also adds in a few neat tricks as well. Unlike the Pixel launcher and most other stock Android launchers, you can now swipe down anywhere on the home screen to access the notification panel, and you can also swipe up anywhere to access the app drawer. This in and of itself genuinely improves the gesture navigation system tenfold, and it seems like such an easy fix for Google to implement themselves. Not only that, but Launcher also has a really neat feature that enables you to swipe left on the home button to go back. This means no matter where you are on your phone, there is no more back button at all, just one button that does everything you need it to do. This, in my opinion at least, is how the gesture navigation system should work on future iterations of Android. So Google, if you're watching, go and hire someone from the Launcher development team and let them fix the gesture navigation system. Aside from that, I thought I'd quickly show you some of the Magisk modules I have installed before I walk you through the rest of my setup. So we obviously have Quick Switch installed, and then I've got a module called Android Mic Fix installed, which helps out a bit with those times when your phone seems to struggle to detect an OK Google or Hey Google prompt. 
Then I've got a Google call screening module, and this enables this feature no matter what country you live in, which is amazing. I've also installed the Google Face Unlock module, which brings back the trusted face feature from Android Oreo and previous Android OSs, and that's awesome. I've then got the Oxygen OS sound pack module, which obviously enables all of the sounds and notifications from OnePlus devices onto any phone. And finally, I've got a RAM manager installed, although I haven't really noticed a massive improvement with this installed, but also haven't noticed things get worse. So I've just got it there to help things along a bit. Now, I know there are heaps of other modules that are worth checking out. So if you have any recommendations, then please let me know down in the comments below. And I will try and include a link to all of the apps and modules and everything else that I mentioned throughout the video down in the notes below as well. All right, so moving to the home screen setup. As mentioned previously, I am using version two of the Launch Air launcher. It's pretty much the Pixel launcher, but on steroids, I highly recommend using it even if you don't have a rooted device. The animations are super smooth and visually pleasing. And if you are rooted, they even have this super pleasing app closing animation, which looks phenomenal. It's a lightweight launcher with lots of customization ability. I definitely highly recommend it. So that wallpaper actually comes from the Wallpy application. Just search for clouds and you should find it. Although I've included a link to the direct Unsplash image down below for quick and easy access. And I've only just recently locked in on this wallpaper and I'm really enjoying the white and blue aesthetic that it gives off. Up the top there is a really neat weather and date widget. And this comes from the watermelon for KWGT widget pack. Although I have adjusted the size of the yellow date icon there so that it lines up with the text portion on the right. I also have this set up to launch into the frog weather shortcut application. I'm constantly checking in on the weather, so I rarely have a setup where that shortcut isn't accessible within a single tap. Down below, we have a single row of five application icons and a dock below that with another five app icons. And then swiping over to the second page, and here we have a third row of application icons. And as you all should know by now, these icons are all from the Crichton icon pack, which I absolutely adore. Again, highly recommend. It's a great icon pack. Now, as for applications on my home screen, I have just the apps I use on a pretty much daily basis. We have the Google Play Store, Spotify, Twitter, the YouTube Studio app, and WhatsApp. And over on the second page, we have Facebook, Instagram, the MyMail application for work-related emails, the YouTube app itself, and finally, a shortcut to my work timetable. Down in the dock, we have my absolute most used apps, Gmail on the far left, the Android Messages application next to that, which has a really nice design now, the Google Phone, Google Maps, and Google Chrome. It goes to show how far Google have come in their app design given my top five most used apps are all made and designed by them. And seriously, how satisfying is that app closing animation? Launch Air, hats off to you. Swiping into the app drawer now, as always, I'm not gonna walk you through each and every application, but some apps of note include the Boost for Reddit application, the Bring Shopping List app, which I've been using for just about three years now. It's a super useful app that I highly recommend. I also use Files by Google to manage and clean up my storage on a pretty regular basis. Ike for all of my reminders, photo time to check up on when the sun is setting and rising in my local area, Podcast Addict for all of my podcast listening, the Solid File Explorer app for file management, and finally, Unfold for designing my Instagram stories. Aside from that, you may notice that despite all of my customization, it's actually a fairly clean app drawer in terms of the amount of apps you can see. And that's because I hide as many apps as I can within the launch air settings, including all of my customization related apps. And this just helps to minimize the clutter so I can more quickly and easily get to the apps that I actually use in my app drawer. So as you can see, even though it is quite a clean setup in terms of its appearance, there is actually quite a bit under the hood that's gone into making it look and feel the way that it does. But I have to say, I've really enjoyed using this launcher and the overall home screen setup. And again, all of the apps and everything else I've mentioned throughout the video will be included as links down in the notes below if you're interested. But that is it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.